This will be the first in a series of tutorials on finite elements. Today we will show how to make a mass matrix for an explicit finite element simulation, and this will be a one-dimensional example. So we will first define a few things about the domain. I'm going to choose the length of the domain, which I'm going to call L. Let's set it to 10. I'm going to choose the reference area of the domain, which we will set it to 0.1. And I'm going to choose how many nodes that I wish to use to discretize the domain. We'll choose 10 for now. The next step is to make a mesh. I'm going to create it in a, it's a structure. And so the first thing is to create the, the points in the mesh. We'll just call that mesh.x. I'll use a uh, linspace command to give me points between 0 and L, numbered nodes, and connectivity. Now, the connectivity will be a matrix where each column is the nodes of an element. So the first column will be the first node of each element. That will go 1 through the number of nodes minus 1. And the second column will be the second node of each element that will be 2 through the number of nodes. Now, I'm going to just show you. I'm just going to output mesh.connect. And as you can see over here, we have the first column is 1, 2, next is 2, 3, and so on. So that gives, each column gives a element nodes. And the reason why we do that is it makes it very easy then to element loops. So now I can loop for each element connectivity in the mesh. If I just output con, then you'll see on each iteration of this loop, you get the nodes of that element. OK, so the next thing to do is to construct the, connective, the, the mass matrix. We'll do it by assembling element mass matrices. So the element mass matrix will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm going to initialize the 0 matrix. And let's next define, we're going to need to use shape functions. So let's define shape functions for two node elements. I'm going to use an anonymous function for this. So shape is at x. And the shape functions for a 1D element are 0 0.5 times array 1 minus x, 1 plus x. That should be right. So the next step is to choose quadrature points. Now, we're going to choose just to loop directly over them. So I'm going to loop over Q. Well, let's loop over the internal, uh, the, the local variable of the element. And so we're going to loop from uh, 1.0, negative 1.0, and then divided by square root of 3. OK, let's run this and see what we get. That seems right. So that gives us the local quadrature points for each element. So now we'll evaluate the shape functions. Shape at C. And we will sum ME is N transpose times N. Now, we're going to need to multiply it also by the density, which I haven't defined yet. So let's give a density, rho 0. This will be the initial density of the domain. For now, it can just be 1.0 times rho 0 times a naught, And the last thing that we need is, since I've done a change of variables, I'm expressing my shape functions as parent coordinates, I need to multiply by the Jacobian of the map, which is dx, the parent coordinate. Now, for linear elements, we can take a small shortcut here in that we know the length of the parent element is always going to be 2 because it goes from negative 1 to 1, whereas the length of the real element we have to calculate. So let's calculate the length of the real element. So le is equal to, I'm going to choose to do L, little l, so we don't confuse it with the domain length. So LE is equal to the length, I'm going to use the MATLAB range command, of mesh.x at evaluated on the elements, or the nodes of the elements. So if I run that really quick, we see the length of each element is 1.11 repeating. And so my map will be times LE over 2. Oh, and we need to do a sum here. We need to accumulate. So now if I output, this should give me the mass matrix of each element. 